Rub up your engines! Okay, here we go, as usual. You're gonna find the truth about cars. You can find out from other people's mistakes or you can find out from other people's wise decisions. Today, it's a 2021 Toyota Corolla that the owner brought over and you get all the real feedback on it and none of this baloney. Now, this car's interesting for two main reasons. As we look under the hood, it's got two interesting things. Dynamic force engines and this also has a CVT transmission that has what's called a launch gear. Now, the new Dynamic Force engine is a radical change for Toyota. Now, what the heck is Dynamic Force engine? I don't know, I think I would have picked a different name. It's kind of clunky, but be it as it may. This thing get 38 miles a gallon on a highway, and it uses interesting engine technology. And by the way, the owner just said it does get 38. It's not some made up thing that they say. They actually do get it. If you drive 65 on a highway, you get 38 miles a gallon. And yeah, you lose a little bit of horsepower that way, but they're making so much horsepower on a four cylinder engine that that's really negligible these days. Days. It's a Toyota Corolla. It's not a race car, right? To add to the efficiency of the engine on top of that, it has a dual fuel injection system. It has regular fuel injectors here, and then it's got direct fuel injectors that spray right into the engine. You can imagine that's complex as all can be, but Toyota engineers are pretty smart at building stuff. Now, the owner's had this car for a year. He's had absolutely no problems just changing the oil in it. I mean, what do you expect? It's a Toyota Corolla, right? But it is a new design. Me, I'm always concerned conservative about that. He stuck his neck out, took a little bit of a chance, but it seems to be paying off perfectly well. And as far as I'm concerned, one of the big reasons behind this is what you see when you open the door here. What does it say right here? Made in Japan. It's an economy car, but it's still made in Japan. Usually people make their lower line cars. Like we send our stuff to Mexico. All those Ford Maverick coming from Mexico. I'd much rather have a car coming from Japan. Let me tell you. My Celico is made in Japan. Mars Lexus was made in Japan. Well, now the Matrix was made in Cambridge, Ontario. Canadians really do a good job making cars. I had a Ford Maverick made in Oakville, Ontario. Drove the heck out of that thing, paid 550 bucks for it. Sold it years later for 500 bucks. So <laughs> you can't complain. The Canadians do a good job too. Okay, so you get the idea that's well built, but understand one thing. This has a CVT transmission. Well, that engineers know what they're doing. This has what's called a launch gear in it. The problem with these early CVT transmissions was they had a burbling leg when you took off. They're very inefficient taking off. People would compare them to getting in a motorboat. It's kind of burble along. Toyota has a launch gear in this. I've yet to seen one break. They seem to be pretty well made. Instead of the car starting up with the belt drive on the drums and flipping some in the beginning, there's an actual first gear called the launch gear. It runs by that gear directly. So it's like a standard transmission. Most of the wear in your transmission is on takeoff. That's when you get a lot of wear, a lot of torque, where you get your first acceleration from. Well, these things accelerate fine, as you'll find out when we take it for a road test. But with this launch gear, all that strain that was put on the CVT transmission, in the beginning is put on this launch gear. It switches to a CVT transmission once you accelerate out of the first launch gear. Then it's a regular CVT transmission. Since most of the strain taken off is on that launch gear, they were able to make the transmission smaller so it gets better gas mileage. And with all that strain taken away, I'm assuming these things are going to last quite some time. The early CVT transmissions didn't last that long. Cost a fortune to build. Cost a fortune to repair when they break. But I've yet to see one of these break. It's a very interesting design. Because, as I said, this baby gets an actual 38 miles a gallon on the highway, but it has good acceleration because of that launch gear. So you can get real gas mileage without building a car that takes off like a turtle. My son's got one and he drives like a maniac and he still gets the good gas mileage. And he was worried about that CVT. He thought, oh man, this thing isn't gonna accelerate. He road tested it before he bought it and said, no, it's zippy. He, he likes driving it around. Oh, this is a 2021 Corolla, new technology. I'm always too cheap to buy a new car, and I don't like new technology until it's been proven. Now, the owner of this car stuck his neck out, obviously, but then he gets a Toyota Corolla. He's totally happy. He's had no problems with it whatsoever. As this technology gets evolved, Toyota generally makes their stuff better and better. I'm just kind of bemoaning the fact that, from what I've read, 
Toyota's going to stop making 1.8 liter engines. And it's the best engines they ever made. So please, Toyota, don't get rid of the 1.8s like you got rid of the V8 engine in the Tundra and took a great truck and turned it into a mediocre truck. Okay, so we'll start up. What do we see? Look, it has an actual key. I love keys. Not for this keyless ignition. Toyota starts right off. Now it is a CVT, but it kind of mimics a multi-speed transmission the way it's set up. So they wanted to make you feel normal. They realized, just like with digital technology, people don't like looking at it. They don't like it feeling different. So, I mean, look. Here's the speedometer. What does it look like? It looks like an old-fashioned analog speedometer that spins around. But no, it's digital. There's sensors on the transmission. And they go here and there's a stepper motor that then makes this turn. But there is no cable connecting it. That's digital. But people just don't like looking at digital stuff most of the time. I mean, you can see here, there's a little digital one over there for people that like how fast you're going. But most everybody likes looking at a speedometer. Because digital speedometers are annoying. 55, 56, 55, 55. It's annoying looking at that crap. Now, the only thing I really don't like about this, and they're all going that way, is it has a stupid electronic parking brake, so you gotta push buttons on it. So you can get it in gear and actually move the thing. All right, now it's off. But then again, it's a Toyota, it hardly ever breaks, but I still ran every cable. It's a lot easier, a lot simpler when it breaks. Now you can see it's got a big, ample backup camera, no problems with that. And you step on it, hey, it goes. Now you can see it looks like it's shifting gears, but it isn't. I can feel like it's shifting gear, so it doesn't feel like it's a one-speed transmission. And for a small car, a small wheelbase, you know, it's got a good ride to it. It certainly handles well. It handles a lot better than the older ones. The modern cars, they come with a big display on it. And the interesting thing about this is, he bought it before prices went gaga, and he bought it brand new for $19,000. So, try that now. <laughs> I've seen people pay 27, 28, or even more. But he paid 19. No, he picked a smart time to buy it. Now we're coming up to our little drag race here. And we'll see how this thing takes off with the launch gear from a complete stop. Look behind us to make sure no one's going to rear end us. It's a wicked street here. And here we go. Now, yeah, it's not a race car, but you can see. It gets up and goes. And notice, when you accelerate hard, the tack goes up high. Because it stops acting like it's got various speeds in it when you're accelerating hard. It's going to go to its max acceleration, which is, of course, when you get the worst gas mileage, too. You don't want to drive like that all the time if you want to get 39 miles a gallon, to say the least. Okay, it rides good. You can hear road noise. That's because it's an economy car. If you want to go out of the way to get a quiet Corolla, you can go to any of these companies. They make sound insulation. And if you want to spend five to eight hours taking the seats out, taking the rugs out, taking the doors apart, you can put sound insulation, and this thing will be probably about 80% quieter. That's the only real difference between cars that are quiet and cars that are not. They put a lot of insulation. My wife's Lexus had a lot of insulation in it. My Celica doesn't, so it makes a lot of noise. So does the Matrix. As a matter of fact, I've got a company send me a kit for the Matrix. I'm gonna put it in there. We're gonna see how quiet I can make it. Now let's see what it's like stopped at an idle. No shaking at all. And I like it because it doesn't have that horrible shut off when you come to a stop and it shuts the car off. I find that annoying. And I'm glad that Toyota didn't stick it on this car. It already gets good gas mileage. And that, of course, ruins your engine. I don't want a car that shuts itself off every time I come to a stop to save some minuscule amount of gasoline. And check it out. This isn't the highway mileage. This is the average mileage. 37 Point one, city and highway. Now, yes, it is a Toyota Corolla, and yes, these are hubcaps, <laughs> but they look good from far away. Who cares? Underneath, they're steel wheels. You hit a big pothole with a steel wheel, you can bend the lip. You can take it off and get a sledgehammer, and you can whack it back out and drive it down the road. You have alloy wheels. You hit a big pothole, it will snap your wheel. And then some of those are 500, 800 bucks a piece. These rims can last forever. And then, you know, one of the excuses people have is, well, the Ally wheels weigh less, you get better gas mileage. Okay, this thing's getting phenomenal gas mileage with the steel wheels. You can see that's pretty much a giant fallacy. Steel is strong, it can be made thinner. The alloys have to be made thicker. The weight differential really isn't all that much. Unless you're talking about a big 18-wheeler truck, that's different. They're humongous wheels. Car wheels, it doesn't make all that much difference. And then a lot of guys, oh, 
They spend more money on their wheels and tires than they do on the car. Okay. It's a Toyota Corolla. That's not what this car is about. You can put different wheels on it if you want, but why? <laughs> it looks good the way it sits now. It runs fine. It's transportation. They've sold, I don't know, 40 something million. Maybe it's up to 50 million now. There's a reason they sell so many of them. And now you just found the truth out about it. The new technology in them, the dynamic force engine, the CVT transmissions with launch gears, they work quite well. They get phenomenal gas mileage. Hey, and this is real. It's a real car, not an advertisement from a company. That's what I'm about. So, you got something you want to show? You can come here in Tennessee or when I'm in Rhode Island, come to Rhode Island, and I'll highlight your car so the world can see. And especially if you're really mad at a company because they sold you a pile of crap and they won't do anything about it, bring that one in. Who knows? Maybe they'll give you another car and we can warn the rest of the world not to buy that crap. So, if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, Remember to ring that bell!